Hey folks, welcome to Hippie's History. I am standing in front of, that's right, you guessed it, the Alamo. So I thought, what a perfect opportunity to tell you a little story about the Alamo. So what you really want to know is starting in 1821 with the Mexican Revolution. That's right, they overthrew the Spaniards. How about that? And one of the republics was Coahuila, Tejas, which included today's Republic of Texas or the state of Texas. Now, everything was kind of smooth sailing for a little while. In fact, the Mexican government was so interested in populating Texas that they had an open liberal immigration policy, which allowed Americans to come in and be Mexicans. But it seemed like the Americans liked to bring their own religious beliefs and they liked to bring slavery. And in fact, in 1824, Mexico passed its first constitution, which was a pretty cool constitution. It was a republic and it was based on individual rights and the Texans loved it. Now we're gonna fast forward to the 1830s when Mexico elected a new president, Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana. Now, this was a president who wasn't that cool. In fact, one might call him a dictator. And one of the first things that he did was crack down on this new republic. In fact, he believed in a centralized Catholic government. So the republic started to go a little bit chaotic, including the state of Tejas. We're going to call it Texas now. And now we go into the Texas Revolution. So in October of 1835, we have the Battle of Gonzales. This is where Santa Ana went to Gonzales in Texas in order to capture their cannon and they'd have none of it. So by December in the Siege of Bear, which is today's San Antonio, the Mexicans have been expelled from the Republic of Texas. Now, it's not the Republic of Texas yet, but we do have the Alamo. Now, the Alamo was originally a Catholic missionary where they would convert people and such. But during the Mexican Revolution, the Mexicans started using it as a garrison to store weapons. In fact, there were 19 cannons that were left behind in the Alamo and about 100 Texans that hung out here after the Mexicans were expelled. And they they were pretty happy-go-lucky for a little while because they thought they had won. In fact, come February 21st, they had a fiesta in honor of George Washington's birthday. How Mexican is that? How Texan is that? I think they're Americans. You know what I mean. But Santa Ana wasn't done. In fact, on February 23rd, he was back with nearly 1,500 troops, vastly outnumbering the Texans who were held up right here in the Alamo. In fact, it was Colonel James Neal, who was the commander of the Alamo, who was begging Sam Houston for reinforcements. Now, he got some reinforcements. In fact, it was Davy Crockett, ex-congressman from Tennessee, who showed up, and James Bowie, the famous James Bowie, who showed up as well with about another 100 men. So we're talking about 200 guys held up in this place right here with 1,500 angry Mexicans on their way. In fact, Santa Ana came raising a red flag, which meant no surrender going on. In fact, they saw these Americans that were held up in the Alamo as pirates, and they were basically ordered to take no prisoners. Everybody in here is going to die. So it lasted for 13 days, from February 23rd to March 6th, and there were a constant attacks on the Alamo, with the Alamo fighting back with all they had. But in fact, by March 6th, they're running out of ammo. They're sticking horseshoes in the cannon. How about that, guys? But the final assault is going to be at 5.30 in the morning on March 6th. It's going to be three assaults on on this building and eventually the Mexicans are going to overtake the Alamo and they're going to slaughter everybody in it. In fact, the Mexicans are going to burn the body so there's no chance these guys are going you know where. Now, in fact, the only ones that lived were the non-combatants and Santa Ana had such a big heart that he let a few of them go back to the town of Gonzales to warn Sam Houston, this is what happens when you fight back against Santa Ana. So at this point, we have what's called the runaway scrape, where Sam Houston is gonna take his army and run eastward closer to America. And at the same time, Santa Ana is gonna be chasing him, but the chase isn't gonna go on for long. And on April 21st, we have the Battle of San Jacinto. And this battle is gonna last all of 18 minutes. In fact, Santa Ana is gonna be captured by Sam Houston. And one of the conditions of surrender is that Santa Ana is going to remove all of his troops from the Republic of Texas. Now, what I didn't mention was during the siege of the Alamo on March 3rd, the Republic of Texas was declared. And that republic is going to last for about 10 years. And in 1845, the United States is going to annex Texas. Texas is going to become a state and my lecture is over. So there it is, guys, the Battle of the Alamo, a 13-day war campaign, which ended miserably for the guys that were held up here. But in the long run, it's gonna be a plus for the Republic of Texas and a big plus for the United States of America. All right, there you go, guys. If you haven't subscribed, you know what I'm gonna tell you to do right now, which is to press that button. I'm looking at you right there. I know you wanna do it. And always remember, wherever you go, where attention goes, energy flows. We'll see you folks next time that you press my button.